Hello and welcome. Today's video is my favorite seven tips and tricks. We're actually going to do free videos by level. So this is level 100. This is beginner level seven tips and tricks. Mind you, I don't think if you know them all, wherever you are on the, uh, you know, level level. Uh, but so basically it's going to be 21 tips and tricks in the end. This is the first seven level 100 beginner. And tip number one, it's one of my favorite ones. So oftentimes in Excel, you'll have to insert today's date and current time. And the best way to do that is control semicolon for today's date and control colon for current time, right? So you got control semicolon for today's date, control colon for current time. As easy as it gets, but keep in mind, this actually refers to your system time. So if your Windows, if your operating system doesn't have the correct time, then this doesn't help you. And also keep in mind that control semicolon in Slovenia, if you want to do that, you will actually need to press control shift comma. So this may vary in regions, but it is control semicolon is the final uh, version of this shortcut. So today's date, current time. The second one is quick formatting. I love this one. This one saves you a ton of time. And first one is the currency format. And you do that by control and the dollar sign. Number format, this one is brilliant. So it's control and the exclamation mark. And mind you, if you press this, it's as if you did format cells, number, decimal places two, and use the thousand separator. It does all that. So control and exclamation mark. Brilliant. The date format is control and the hash. So control and hash and percentage format is control and percent. But keep in mind, look at this number. So it's 0 0.236. Now, as far as percentages go, that's actually 23% or actually 23.6%, right? But if I press control and percent sign, it's going to say it's 24%, right? And that is because it's not doing the decimal places. So if I go up here and I do percentage here, it's going to do two decimal places. But if I do control and the percent sign, it's acting as if it's this button. So if I go here and do percentage, I get to decimal places. If I just press this one, or if I go control and percent sign, then I get no decimal places, but still it's a brilliant shortcut and you should use it. So these are your shortcuts. And again, keep in mind, just I'll say it again in Slovenia, this is actually control shift four. This is control shift one. This is control shift three, and this is control shift five. And all of those numbers are on the alphanumerical part, right? Not in the numeric part on the right. Okay, so these are quick formats, brilliant, brilliant thing, uh, you know, brilliant thing to have in your arsenal. Now, the next one is copy sheet. So we have a sheet here, it has some formulas, it has some cells, and now I want to copy this sheet, right? And how often have you seen people that either do this and then control C and control V or right click, move or copy, and then they do all that. But the best thing is you just grab the sheet, you move it and you press the control key as you're moving it. You're going to see it gets this little plus sign. And now you just release your mouse button, then you release the control key. And there it is, a copy of that sheet with all the formulas. So we just recalculated the rand between. This is the original one. This is the copy. Brilliant. Okay, now next one. People don't really use the shift key enough. Now you can use it with, you know, control shift and whatever, if that is your, um, the way that you have to press the shortcuts, you know, to get what you want. 
but a shift key also does some other cool stuff and one thing that it does is it does this so if you look at this range and it's actually you know it's quite the same here the only difference is this is just a range and this is a table right and in a table there's a feature not many people know but it's brilliant can you see that these are actually in the wrong order so column one and then column three four and then it's column two so this one should be in between these two right and how do you insert this one in between these two well if you have a table that's easy you select it all and then you go to the edge and start moving it and it will automatically want to insert uh, insert it between two columns brilliant so that's how table work but works but this is not a table so how do you do it here if I just go like this try to move this release it oh it says there's already data here do you want to replace it well no cancel but I could do this I could select this I could start moving this and if I press the shift key anytime in between now it just wants to insert those cells and what I'm looking for is exactly this state do you see how it says it's going to insert them between column one and three I release the mouse I release the shift key and there it is so shift key brilliant in Excel okay now the next one so tip and trick number five is how to create a simple series so just one to ten let's say right now the first tip is you're gonna see a lot of people doing this having one and two and then selecting both and then either dragging and dropping which you would have to do if this was not present but if this is present you can just do a double click and it's gonna do it for you right but not many people know you can do that with just the one if I drag and drop now it's just gonna repeat the one but if I hold control key with that now it's gonna create a series there it is right but I can take this further because you know all of these are good but what if I needed a series that goes from 1 to let's say 12,000 well I'm definitely not gonna drag and drop that I'm definitely not gonna <laughs> hold control key for all that time so what you do is this you insert your first uh, the first so you insert where your series starts and that's with one right with this and then you go so you have to be on that and then you go home fill fill series and what you get is this dialog box where you need to say this I need it in a column it is linear so it's always the same step the step is one and I need you to stop at and I'll just ballpark it here I'll say stop at 20 just so you see that it goes only to 20 but I could input you know all the way up to million forty eight thousand and so on so okay and there it is right so it, it creates that series for me and then there's a brilliant shortcut for that and not many people know this so I'm just gonna try replicating what I did but instead of going home series and all that I'm just gonna go to the to the fill handle right but then I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna hold the right click so I'm right clicking it I'm holding the right click and now I go slightly down back up just so I change the focus do you see how the focus changed there and then I go back up I release it and it says well are you trying to do any of these and these are so brilliant so brilliant and I am trying to do one of these the one I'm trying to do is series column and now this time let's go to 15 okay brilliant that one is brilliant okay next one as simple as it gets and yet many people will still color cells or color cell borders for it so grid lines now you may have noticed none of these none of the sheets up to now had any grid lines so any of those gray lines but this one has it right the grid lines are on now how do you turn grid lines grid lines on and off 
Well, there are many ways, but only two really count. The first one would be if you go to the View tab, find the grid lines and just uncheck them. But I would say the best way to do it or the best place to do it would be Page Layout. And then you have this Sheet Options group and you have grid lines in here. And why I prefer this to that is because you have both commands here. Either if you want to view them and if you want to print them. And I love that fact that you have both of those right there handy. And all I do is I uncheck it so I don't want to view grid lines and there they are, they disappear. And if I need them again, I'll just check them again. Right? So grid lines on off, brilliant thing. Okay, and now let's go for the drop down input help. Now this is this is the one I love, but I think people misuse it or don't really understand how it works. So this is meant as a help for inserting data. It's not a drop down that would exist in the cell, but you can call it anytime. You can say, oh, now I need a drop down. Let's create one. Right? And it's only meant to help you insert data that is, that's already somewhere in that column. And that's somewhere in that column. That's where people get confused because you see that I stood over here, right? Now, which cells are adjacent to that? Well, it's these four and it's these two. So if I go Alt down arrow, which is the shortcut for getting this Alt down arrow, I get this and you can see that there's a lot of names up here, but Tina is not one of them. Right? You see that? Why? Well, because she's not adjacent to this cell. And now if I go here and do Alt down, now I only have Jimmy, Janice, and Tina, right? Because they're all adjacent, but I don't have these four. If I did this, if I inserted something here, let's say I'm going to insert Jimmy again. Then I go here. Now I have all of them. Why? Because they're all adjacent to this cell. Right? So basically, Alt down arrow is the way that you, number one, open up every single drop drop down that exists including filters all down key opens them up with a so that's how you open them up with a keyboard but then if no uh, drop down is present alt down key is going to create one for you and it's going to create one that can help you but only if you're standing next to the cells that are full if i'm standing here all down key creates nothing for me Okay, so you need to keep that in mind, but it is a brilliant thing, right? Okay, so that was seven tips and tricks, level 100. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video, which is going to be seven tips and tricks, level, I guess, 200, uh, but it's going to be intermediate, right, for the intermediate. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.